we also have the compassion of this unnamed man. Isn't it interesting? Joseph doesn't find this man. This man sees him, that he's wandering around, and feels sorry for him. He's like, oh, what's wrong with this guy? Doesn't know where he's going. Hey, what are you looking for? And that got me thinking. You know how many unnamed people are in Scripture that had profound impact? So many people. Here, here's a, and these unnamed men, they're not named, and yet the small things or even the big things they contributed fed into the redemptive plan of God. So here's a few examples. Gideon had 300 men. Gideon didn't fight that whole battle by himself. No, he had 300 men. We don't know their names, but God used them to win the victory. We know the victory was the Lord. Ultimately, the Lord fought for them. It's not the strength of man. It's the strength of God. What about the wise men? We don't know their names. Now, Christian history has speculation about what their names were, but the Bible doesn't tell us who they were. What about the centurion who Jesus said, there is no one in all of Israel who has faith like this man. Guess what? We don't know his name. We don't know his name. You would think, like, what? We don't know his name? The person who has greater faith than everyone in all of Israel, and we don't know his name? But you might be thinking, Tyrus, aren't those people, they're, they're great warriors, great magi, a centurion? Those are great men. Well, I'm nothing like them. Two people I want to point out who had small, yet a profound ripple effect through history. Jesus tells his disciples before he enters Jerusalem to go get him a donkey. You ever think about the owner of that colt? The owner of that donkey? What are you doing? Our master needs it. Okay. That's all he does. And yet, he's fulfilling prophecy. The owner of that colt has no idea what's going on. He's minding his own business. All of a sudden, these guys come in and say like, hey, we need this. Okay. What if he says no? He didn't. That's all that man, from what we know, contributes to the greater narrative of redemptive history, and it's so pivotal and so important. And then there's my favorite, the thief on the cross. We don't know his name. We don't know his name. All the thief on the cross did, you know, all he did, all he's remembered for, all he did was repent. There's nothing in his life that makes him worthy of salvation. He didn't do anything to earn it. He couldn't contribute anything to his salvation. By the way, spoiler alert, neither can you and neither can anybody else. You cannot earn your way. There is nothing you contribute. And you know what? Praise God the account of the thief on the cross is there because that ends the debate right there. This guy is a rebel and a murderer. There's nothing. Only one reason he gets to heaven. Jesus, remember me. He says, we are guilty. We deserve to die. I've done nothing that merits the salvation. I've done nothing to make me worthy. Just as faith in Jesus. What a beautiful story of redemption. And it's recorded for us, and it has encouraged me, and encouraged countless others, that it has nothing to do with what you do. It also do with repentance and faith in the only one who can save you. But that's it. Is God working in the mundane, ordinary lives? Here's something for you. The extraordinary God works in ordinary things. The extraordinary God is working in ordinary things. God uses everything. And nothing, listen, nothing and no one Nothing and no one is wasted. No matter how small or insignificant you think you are or what you contribute, God does his best work with weak and ordinary people because those are the only kind of people that exist. Those are the only kind of people that exist. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe so you can get more video content from Twine and the Vine. And remember, I'd like to hear your thoughts, so please 
make a comment down below. God bless and catch you next time.